Hey there and welcome to today's video on Facebook ads, dynamic product ads, step by step, okay, in 2024. I've made this into a slideshow, it's down below, there's some other links and we'll go through it. I'll be pausing the video intermittently as we sort of go through and discuss different things. This is it can be a bit complex to those starting out, being for beginners in the beginning, but you'll quickly get the hang of it and it is, it's very automated once set up. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So firstly, because this is a Shopify video integrating your Shopify catalog into Facebook, watch, I have another video that where you can integrate it, but to break it down into simple steps. Now, um, <clears throat> pardon me, you install the Facebook ads and Instagram ads sales channel on Shopify. It's free. That's a link you can use there. Once you've used that link, you just follow the steps and you integrate your pixel. In that other video, it'll explain that more. I'm not going to get too in depth into that today because that video explains it all <coughs> in a few minutes for you. For the sake of this being more a strategy and running the actual campaign, we're going to focus more on that. So it's very important as a few little tips that you have your Facebook business manager admin do this, okay? If you're the admin, not a problem. If you have a team and a number of people with varying permissions, please make sure your admin does it and that they, he or she or they have uh, the required permissions to the assets because it's going to need your Instagram account. It's going to need your Facebook, your ad account, your pixel, um, and it'll ask if you have a catalog or want to make a catalog. Either way, once you've done it, it's set and forget. The steps will be all in that app once you set it up. Once you set it up, you rarely have to look at it unless you have to reconnect due to a change in password or permissions that does happen. I also have the further steps in that Google Doc down below. And no, pardon me, sorry, you should also integrate your pixel. Now I'm just gonna stop as I wanna show you a couple of things just to be mindful of um, and so that you can understand this step one in addition to that video as well. Okay, so we're back and we're in my test business manager. Um, now, this is where you can get to your catalog. Under here, you can go to all tools and you see all these options, right? We can go into a, a huge series about all of this, right? But the reality is you won't use most of this. Um, you don't really need to. Um, I will go into different segments of it, but right now, obviously for the sake of this video, we don't need to. So if you click this and you want to go <clears throat> to business settings and then you go under the uh, data sources catalogs, you'll see all your catalogs, okay? And you'll see I have permission. You make sure you give yourself full permission, okay? Um, because when you want to run the ads, because well, once you've made the catalog, well, it's there, but you won't have the default permissions. Um, so make sure you have the permissions. Otherwise, when you go to make the ad, pardon me, in Facebook, you won't have the permissions and it just won't show up and you'll be wondering what's going on. Okay, so all you do is you don't, if you are running an, uh, using an agency, you can assign a partner, you can give that as a, to them and also make sure you associate it with a pixel. Okay, these are a number of pixels I've used in the past for different purposes. Associate it with a pixel because if you don't, associate it with a pixel, it's not going to have any data. So when you run the camp, run the campaign, it's not going to spend anything because it's like, well, I don't have any data, right? So you need to associate it with a pixel. So those two things are very important as we go to actually run your ads. You can have unlimited catalogs, by the way, that is not a problem. And if you want to have a closer look, you can open up your catalog manager and actually see the products. Okay. As you can see, this is from a test store. And you can see the product and then the SKUs and then you can see the detailed information. It usually takes a moment for it to load. And you'll see it's added by Shopify because that's the integration. You'll see the title, the price, the URL, the description, everything that's pretty much pulled in uh, from Shopify all dynamically. And if I ever update this, It'll update, usually it takes an hour or something. Um, you can do a manual sync as well. So you've got your data sources, pardon me. You've got your data sources here where you can use that where it syncs and you can look at errors and issues. So if you're running third party platforms on Shopify, you rarely have to look at this. Um, I've got a few errors because it's a test store, but 99% of the time you won't have many unless you have products that are disapproved. But in most cases you won't really look here. And then you can look at events as well and you can see data coming through and, and use that. But again, you won't use that all that much. You can also then bind it to your shop. Now your shop also is your um, Facebook and Instagram shop. 
Also, you can do WhatsApp as well if you're running WhatsApp, where you can actually push your catalog organically there. So as you build your business, build your brand, build your followers, they can actually just browse your catalog natively from their, those channels, which I strongly recommend you do. It costs you nothing, takes five minutes work, and it's all dynamic, right? It's all hands off. <clears throat> Pardon me. So those are the main things you want to really look at. And I just wanted to make you aware of that because when you have errors, you want to look at this. When you want to look at your data sources and events, you can look at that and you can change even the name and stuff as well if you wish. Okay, so my um, the catalog name default is whatever it is. You can change that. You can change a number of default things as well. So I strongly suggest you have a look at this. Um, <coughs> pardon me, I've got a bit of a cold. As I said, you've got your shop, so you can integrate your pages as you build your business out as well. So those are just a couple of side things. We're going to go straight back now into actually making the campaign and then the ad. I'll be right back. All right, lovely. Now, again, just quickly before I go into the ads manager, again, the slides down below, you can just get them if you wish. But I always like to be very detailed with these things. Once you're in the ads manager, um, your catalog is connected, you can make your campaign. I like to talk about this so that you have the theory side of it as well. Um, we're gonna be focusing on remarketing. DPA ads, dynamic product ads work best for remarketing. And my advice for those who are wondering how much to spend, 10% of what you're spending on cold ads collectively. So if you're running Facebook, Google, multiple platforms, even influencer, I would put it, at to get some at total, $1,000 divided by 10, $100, okay? I always do that because you will find that that's, that's just that sweet point, especially at the start. If it's working, don't usually go higher than 20%, right? That's just my experience and I would break it down. But anyway, um, with the look back window, you want to run a custom audience 30 days. I have some test custom audiences I'll show you, but you know, you can make you make a 30 day custom audience looking back. Um, and you want to make sure your country is set to the country where you're getting traffic or running ads from. Very, very important. Because for instance, if I'm marketing in the United States, I'm actually from Australia, uh, it will default the campaign to Australia. I've had that in the past where it's not spending, it's like, why is it not spending? Literally just because the country was wrong and then it started spending, right? So rest assured that if you make that mistake, you can change it, publish it, and it will start working. It might just take a little bit of time, okay? Always give those things at least 24 hours. And I will recommend this as a CBO. I'm gonna set this up as a manual campaign. I just prefer doing it manual for me as a very personal preference. Um, and I'll show you, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, I leave age and gender open because the custom audience you're defining Everything from the custom audience, I just leave it open, especially when in the beginning, you wanna leave it open and, and uh, see what opportunities you get. Without further ado, let's go into the ads manager now and actually start setting this up. So now we're in the ads manager and basically I've made a test campaign. Just, it's just a draft, you can just unpublish it. But for the sake of this video, again, because this is DPA ads, you don't wanna run any of these because this is Shopify e-commerce, so you go continue manual as i said you can go that but just my personal preference of of this is how i started a bit old school when it comes to these things give it a name so i'm going to call it rh and i like to give it a name dpa and i'll call it catalog 30 days uh, bc stands for um <coughs> view content and i like to put remarketing okay that way i can see very clearly as you can see there very very simple ignore this Ignore that, you, um, pardon me, sorry, you do use a catalog and you choose the catalog. Now, when you hover over it, you'll see the one, I have a, a bogus one that I've just made and then another one as well. So I have two, right? So you choose your catalog. That's why the names are important because you might have multiple catalogs as well. Keep in mind as well, within those catalogs, you can make product sets. So you can also make a dynamic product ad or a cold one based on just t-shirts as opposed to pants, right? So you can tailor all of that. Hence why I wanted to show you um, in the catalog manager, you can do all of that there. But again, for the sake of today, if you want more of that, comment that down below. But for the sake of today, we'll go into this. So again, set the budget. I'm just leaving it at $25 for the sake of this. We don't want to do an AB test reporting. You leave as standard. Then I go into the ad set and I'm going to call it VC. Again, 30 days, catalog. 
right? Because when you're in the ad set and you're scaling, you'll have plenty of these. And so having a simple naming convention really, really helps. And mind you, you can edit this. So at times what I'll do is I'll put 30 days minus three days. So I only want people in the last 27 days because I'm tailoring an ad with maybe a different unique offer, okay? <clears throat> So I always go a number of conversions, especially because it's remarketing. You don't want impressions and that, you want sales. You've already gotten that cold traffic. You wanna go for the kill, so to speak. Always set the start date as the next day, as in my other videos. Very, very important that you do that. Don't set an end date. I always just recommend manually turning off if things aren't working. You can retarget people, okay? So this is where, again, the advantage of DPA ads is you can run cold or and you can do it all here. So basically you're making a custom audience within it. Now I recommend 30 days, okay? So viewed or added to cart but not purchased, right? So you wanna start with that one, especially in the beginning because you're going to mainly get people who are viewed and not and added to cart but not purchased. If you do add to cart, that's too far down the funnel. You need probably at least 50, 50 conversions of every type. So 50 view content for it to be justified, 50 add to cart, 50 initiate checkout, and so on. But as you can see here, you've got upsell products, cross sell, and you can do common, custom combinations as well. For the, for the sake of this, you, the further you go down here, the bigger your business, right? So in, as a beginner video, you're gonna start with 30 days, very, very simple. That's why I love DPA ads. It actually does a lot of the legwork for you. Or you can also do a custom audience as well. <clears throat> Pardon me, saved audience. And, or you can do a custom audience here too. So if I set 30 days, I have a video on how to make custom audiences. You can go and watch that. It's in my channel in the playlist, but you can do that as well. But for the sake of this, just leave it at that. I find that works best, let the pixel, because you've integrated that's why we did that last part. You've integrated the catalog with a pixel. It just has the data and it will do the hard work for you. It's it's phenomenal, honestly. Um, now I do use Advantage Plus placements. Obviously you can go manual, but for DPA, DPA nearly fits in every placement perfectly. Facebook just optimizes it because it's just a square image. So it's very, very simple, okay? Next, you'll wanna to go to the actual ad. So again, we give the ad a name. So I'm gonna call it ad. This is just my personal preference. Um, catalog product set one BC 30 days. Okay, I just do that. And as I said, you can create templates because when I'm running a lot of ads, I get very confused very easily. So I need something that, that sits in my mind easily. So you can see the preview and you can change it. <coughs> I always recommend having a look at mobile. That's the most important one, especially in e-commerce. See how pretty that looks. Okay, and you can you can have a look. You know, one of the important ones is stories. You can see how nice it looks on stories, reels. You can check all of them and you can even send a preview and have a look as well, okay? It's fantastic. So you'll find that this works really, really well. Um, so next from here, you can have your headline. So, <coughs> pardon me. The headline, leave it, okay? The headline is just the product name. You wanna leave that. Don't touch it. I just go single image. You want to go slideshow, okay? And then primary text. Now in the beginning, I just simply go, hey there. Did you forget something? Return now to complete your order before stock runs out. All right, a little bit of urgency there, uh, but nothing too pushy. Just sort of a nice gentle nudge. And that's what I recommend for beginners, especially as you're building out your business, just a nice gentle nudge, right? You don't wanna go straight for discounts because that devalues your brand. I recommend just starting with that. And then obviously you have your AI generated ones as well. I don't really use them for this. I start very simple. Naturally, you want shop now because we're e-commerce, so that doesn't need to be changed. You can highlight promo codes. Again, as I just said, don't want to because you don't want to devalue your brand in the beginning. As you start segmenting this, you can add discounts and you add them there. Absolutely, it works and it works well. Um, but in the beginning, no. And I have that in my slideshow and we're gonna discuss that shortly as well. Enhancements. Now, I recommend going through these enhancements and using it. I recommend just turning these on, right? Let, it ha let Facebook literally do the legwork for you, okay? 
What it's going to do is it's you're giving it more opportunity to optimize for different placements. It just makes your ad stand out without much work, well, any work for you at all. Your website, you want to send them to your homepage. Very important. A lot of people get confused here about where to send. Literally to your homepage, www.dogs.com. Display link, ignore that. That's not that important. Mobile link, mobile app, you don't have one, so not important. Okay, so you can leave all of those. Language, leave as default. Make sure you have website events so it's bound to your pixel, okay, so that it, it tracks the data, and you're done. That's how you do it. Now, I'm gonna go back to the slides now so we can discuss a few last points as we finish up the video. Now, as I said, I just wanted to add these couple of tips here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I suggest mainly not offering a discount code in the beginning um, because that will devalue your brand, right? So a lot of people uh, getting the concept of offering a discount. I recommend maybe offering a discount on your website for like a newsletter sign up, okay, to get their email, but try not to hear, at least in the beginning, um, because every dollar, and you, you'll find that the difference of conversion rate is marginal. I, um, you know, people love discount codes naturally, but it devalues your brand long term. So I, I recommend not. Um, you can use labels as well for different things where people can actually click it, click labels, and you can make custom labels. <coughs> um, and I always want to say that, you know, remark dynamic remarketing, it just simple works best. Okay. Um, just keep it simple. Okay. You don't need to make it overly complex. A lot of people have these complex strategies which work. But I just find simplicity works, right? Seen this product, come back. It's just a gentle reminder, okay? And never split test, okay? And that's pretty much it. So I hope this has been helpful. As a last slide, if you um, want to join Discord, ask any questions, there's a link there. If you're interested in, in using Day Beautify for your theme, there's a link there as well. If you're new to Shopify, click that link. Um, check out our change log and follow us on social media as well as myself, Ricky Hayes releasing a lot of content and really enjoying this. Now, I have been listening to the community a lot more as well, um, where I've gotten some feedback. I hope this slide is a lot more clear and definitive. I've also been trying to make the content more engaging um, and interactive, and I plan to keep that going. But please let me know if you have feedback down below. Um, other than that, thank you very much for your time. Have a lovely day. Take care and goodbye.